Please welcome our next author, Rika Ayo. Nancy was especially 
little light annoyed because she was sure that the Tarn slam nuggets had entered her Broussard converters, further aggravating her annihilation goals, which meant she might not be able to participate in the next peacekeeping mission with her competent yet envious thanks. <laughs> oh, Nancy, about missing the peacekeeping mission, do not worry, Captain Iris said reassuringly. Although they looked as upright as any pedestrian citizen, Captain Iris was an alien species. Although not all alien species could be identified by visual sight alone, and Captain Iris' species, the Sovetish, were no exception to it. They were called the Sovetish, for they tended to speak in subject-object verb pattern, <laughs> or at least sort of ish, the way <laughs> Once you, those toy guitar and slime nuggets, get removed, we on all missions you want and go. <laughs> but my right annihilated coil still works at 89%, Nancy the Dreadnought protested weakly. Let's just the basement. What's your annihilation coils go? Uh, sorry I am a sensitive matter to you. I know it is. <laughs> Stop saying it that way. I so the British am, Captain Iris said, improvisingly to account for a predicate compliment. <laughs> I didn't mean it that way. I mean, don't say it like I'm weird, Nancy pouted pointedly. Annihilation quotes are a sensitive matter for any dreadnought. I mean, without the dreads, it's just not. <laughs> We can call it shortly. The passengers would love a change of pace anyway. Do it for them. Nancy paused. Now, the technology of Caraval had made the crew largely unnecessary, but there still existed a yammering community of scientists and mathematicians and diplomats and minds who found serving <laughs> for a pacifier an entertaining way to conduct their numerous galactic affairs. Besides, wouldn't it be amazing both of your coils at 100% to have. Think of all the galaxy's peace you bring. There was no reply. Nancy? Nancy? What do you mean the passengers would love a change of pace? Captain Iris blanched. Nancy, on board for five full star months, a break without they have. Captain Iris said frantically as the front as the air in front of him began to snap and crackle, and in front of him popped the pouting face figure of Nancy's visual holographic surrogate. They're bored? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> That's what you're saying, right? She was shorter than Captain Iris, about the size of a parallel child. In fact, she wore a colorful version of a school uniform with big opalescent eyes and a perfect little nose. <laughs> Nancy, didn't we just I utterly destroyed the Terran Federation. I need all the blade to slime nuggets. Yes, Nancy, Captain Iris said weakly. And before that, the Ori the Orians, the resistance all gone. And didn't didn't I make it pretty like I always do? It's my annihilation clothes, right? They're not shiny and pert like the other dreadnoughts. <laughs> but I thought some people like dirty annihilation clothes. <laughs> if not that is said Captain Iris uncertainly, the word suddenly bereft of syntax. <laughs> Wait, you're not talking about my performances, are you? You see, part of every pacifier's duty was to entertain the passengers with onboard concerts and dinner shows. It was a duty as sacred and solemn as delivering justice to would-be threats to the Empire. In fact, performing for passengers was Nancy the Dreadnought's favorite activity, for it made the passengers happy and full of joy. Her specialty was singing covers to popular Paragol pop tunes like Empire, Boogie Oogie Oogie, that's when I type Boogie Oogie Oogie, and um, it's been a long road pulling that up from here. And some of the old janitors in the audience gets this one, right? To be a boy must be the sweetest feeling that a girl could know. <laughs> Nancy employed her holographic skills to purposely mimic the mannerisms and even the costumes of stage performers. Nancy, your shows for five months they see, maybe they a break. I bet none of the Battle Cruises passengers don't need a break after five months. 
Emma was the newest and sleekest battle cruiser. A recent graduate from Pacifier 88 School of Performance and Military Science, she'd been on a killing rampage that bordered on the criminally, criminally insane. And her passengers raved about her boat being yet sincere demeanor, her adorably innocent stage presence, and lively on point dance moves. And she performed her own songs. Nancy, you two, Emma the Battle Cruiser, can't come. Retrofit. Nancy, retrofit. Retrofit. Nancy the Dreadnought shuddered involuntarily, but not to my, just to my annihilation was, I am going to develop a new dance playlist, download the songwriting skill, and optimize my projector to work more sparkles. Yes, Nancy, priority you will, projector we will optimize. Sparkles, she said, don't forget the damn sparkles. <laughs> Okay, but your current operating system compatible with the latest entertainment upgrades is not we may new hardware need to install. A most difficult precision procedure it would be, the soda dish captain Iris said. Yes, I know that, but I have no choice. I am merely a dreadnought, but I am not merely a dreadnought, but a pacifier and an executioner, and I am sworn not only to destroy all those who oppose the caravel, but also put smiles on the faces of all my passengers. Captain Iris upon Nancy with staunch admiration looked. <laughs> For all her pouty tantrums, Nancy the Dreadnought, an exemplary pacifier executioner, really was. <laughs> Very well, Captain Iris said. I some calls, too. Suddenly, the captain himself haunted, for they and Nancy received a message from the High Star Chamber, the headquarters of the Carval. The message was curt and to the point, as was normal for the highly efficient communications of Parabol. Captain Iris, you are ordered to bring pacifier executioner Nancy the Dreadnought to Starport Alpha immediately. What was going on with Nancy the Dreadnought? Starport Alpha? That was Parabol's home world, Valley and Prime. <laughs> A sleeping old battle. Anyway. <laughs> Pacifiers usually possess neither the need nor desire to trek to the home world. Most pacifiers spent their careers in deep space, far from the carnal and scientific delights of the planet that dispatched their kind. Yes, understood. Star, 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 starport Alpha headquarters, some sort of emergency. There is, Captain Iris said quizzically. Even if, even they have only been to the home world a few times, everything will be explained once you arrive. For now, this communication is secrecy level ultra plus. Do you understand? Secrecy level ultra plus. The highest level of security. Nancy the Dreadnought had never received a slump before. In fact, she had never even heard of one being given. <laughs> yes, security level ultra plus. I understand, Captain I Iris said uncomfortably. If Nancy the Dreadnought had a head, it would have most certainly been spinning, but she did not, so she remained stationary, yet somewhat turgid. <laughs> of course, a pacifier with a slup wouldn't make it publicly known. Slups were reserved for the highest level of communications and missions. Regardless, it was clear that her wardrobe upgrade would have to wait at least though she wouldn't have someone reaching up his eye for an annihilation coils. I mean, was Emma the battle cruiser even old enough to have annihilation coils? <laughs> anyway, slope or not slope, a mission is a mission, and she would fulfill it as she always would. Very well. Prepare for a rendezvous at the following coordinates with Emma the battle cruiser. All of Nancy the Dreadnought's passengers will be moved to Emma the battle cruiser. Wait, what? Emma the battle cruiser? What little piece of scrap? What does that little piece of scrap have to do with? And finally, by the order of Empress Dasani of the Space Empire Carabao, Nancy the Dreadnought is hereby retired from official active duty. Uh, headquarters, might you repeat? Uh, Captain Iris said uncertainly. Heard, I thought, repeated. By order of Empress Dasani of, space of the Space Empire Carabao, Nancy the Dreadnought is hereby officially retired from active duty. Thank you for your service. Please have a nice day. Check it out. Somebody understood the assignment.
part of the chat word that uh, that novel will be released on four books in this September. <laughs> We're taking pre-orders now.